Um, okay, yeah. So I'm John Kieran. I am not a statistician. I'm uh, at the vision group here in Lund. Um, so we're doing uh, sensory biology, obviously, on, on vision. And we come across a lot of um, orientation data. Uh, and I've been looking at ways to, to deal with that. It's, been, it's problematic for many people in the field. So for that reason, I've been looking at, at how we uh, can explore this with STAM. And more recently, uh, with the, the RMS groups. OK, so thanks to everybody uh, who has helped me uh, knowingly or otherwise, uh, which, in which includes Paul here, um, Arika, and uh, our supervisor, and everyone else in the Little Vision Group. OK, so directions are everywhere in sensory biology, uh, especially. Uh, we have many, many cases where we have animals uh, in, in a relay for a variety of reasons, and we're interested in the directions that, uh, that, that they will take or the kinds of experiments. Here we have a, a colleague of ours, uh, Basil Lundi, has had experiments with, uh, with a fantastic dung beetle. Dung beetles will uh, uh, take their dung ball, you can see the animal here, and they will roll it, and they will roll it away from the dung pile and do so in a straight line, because otherwise it will be stolen by another uh, dung beetle. So it's very important to get them away in a straight line. So it just makes a very, very robust response for, for, for experiments and understanding senses, and they have excellent, um, very sensitive vision. So they're very interesting from that respect. Um, I'll just show you how these kind of plots work. This is an arena here. Um, these arrows indicate a mean direction. Uh, these black points here uh, um, are the, the vector taken by the, the, the animal to get out of the center of this arena on repeated trials. And this zero here is the, the um, center of the stimulus. And this, actually, in this instance, or is the, uh, this represents the uh, mean direction of the animal. Um, in this instance, they, they, he showed that the animals um, uh, do the dance on top of their on top of their dung ball, and they use that to to get landmarks in their environment and, and to follow those paths. And um, here's another instance. This is to do with uh, navigating birds, whereby um, the magnetic field around the birds was manipulated around zebra finches, um, and it was used to show uh, um, uh, how these animals respond. And um, uh, again, you have these. Um, the, the, the uh, mean direction center of stimulus, and you have the, the points taken by animals, and these arrows represent the um, also the centroid, so representation of the um, the variance around which the animals are are, are uh, responding. And of course, time periods are cyclical. So um, uh, uh, this is relevant for us because animals have endogenous rhythms, which um, are, are, are hugely important to them, and they they uh, behavior varies obviously on diurnal cycles and on, on lunar cycles and on annual cycles. And we're not going to look into that. Um, we have all this data, and yet the analysis is, is unduly rudimentary. Um, uh, if I can uh, go back, no, I'll show you later. Um, the, it's a big reliance on not only null hypothesis tests, but on basically one null hypothesis test, or, or, just, or just a small number. Assumptions of, of symmetry and data, and assumptions of uh, uh, sample size, which are made in frequency statistics, which are particularly important with surface statistics, but which are um, uh, which do not always hold. There's, there's often um, not a huge data set, especially if you if you if the response you're interested in is is a uh, uh, by model, for instance. Um, so that so it's a little rudimentary, and um, the results are not always met. And there's very little exploration of uh, effect size or or mapping of the uncertainty of this kind of data. This is unfortunate. Um, it occurs, I think, possibly because in, in our field there's many people from uh, physics background, engineering, engineering background, and they're getting very precise measurements, very precise measurements of light and these kind of things, and uh, they're used to this, and the effect sizes are often very, very large in comparison to psychology, say, but it's not always the case. Um, and it's also kind of, um, it's a bit wasteful when you, when you have this kind of data to, to, uh, to get at the very, very last step to, to throw out the information. Uh, okay. Um, so the, what I'll talk to you about is millipedes. Millipedes, Thousand Fruits, Thousand Fruits, fantastic animals. And they have these really unusual, really terrible, um, and really ancient eyes. And their evolutionary provenance is of, is of great interest to us. So we want to know um, how well they can see. And no one had done this before, so I went and I went and tried to find out using this Swedish uh, millipede, which I believe is Klub Scheitzer Okay, so um, so what I did, I took a relay like this, I put stimuli wrapped around the outside, I put bright lights over it, they move away from bright lights towards dark spaces, and this stimulus is made from a difference of Gaussians, it's designed so that if the animal cannot find this pattern, then it will, it will not be able to resolve anything, if its angular sensitivity is too wide. Here it has found the stimulus, millipedes do not move this fast, this is a step of about five times, unfortunately. Um, so I took uh, lots of these uh, different stimuli, lots of animals, and applied this experiment um, many different times. 
and uh, here you see the uh, here you see the data. Um, these circles represent the various different treatments. Uh, this uh, number here is the, the um, angles obtained by the, the, the half width of, of this of this stimulus. Um, so I have uh, in, in, in treatments of increasing size starting with your control. Um, again, this uh, red arrow here represents the centroid with the circular mean and circular variance. Um, and these are the individual animals which were run in the, in the different treatments. Um, Sorry, can I just ask, so what, what is the stimulus and why would they want to go for it? Oh, excellent. Yes, important. Um, so, uh, because they, uh, partly because they have crop vision, they move quite slowly. These animals are, are very heavily nocturnal, although they have no known predators, very strange. Um, <laughs> they uh, possibly, partly for that reason. Um, so they, they will move, like, like many um, animals with crap eyes, they will move towards dark spaces to avoid animals with much better eyes. Um, and they, uh, so they will, they will try to find the dark part of, of this target. But um, if the angular sensitivity uh, of, the, of their uh, receptors are, uh, are too wide, and they will not be able to find this dark area because it will, it will uh, be equivalent to the gray areas from, from the point of view of their vision, or the contrast will be, will be extremely low, and they'll be motivated. Um, so so, so uh, ordinarily what happened with this data set is that people would uh, usually run a, t a, a, a test called the, um, the Willy test or the V test, and they will look for, for clustering in general, so, so uh, uh, compare the circuit, the uh, variance, um, and in particular the variance towards one pre-specified point, in this case the central of the stimulus. Um, and then they would do this for each, uh, each of the different treatments, and then they would use um, uh, other tests, to, quite conservative tests, to compare the control to the various treatments. Um, so in spite of going to all this effort, tremendous efforts to create the, um, uh, their experiments, it it's, it's, uh, can be a bit rudimentary. Um, so we want to do something different. And in this particular instance, um, I have discretized the data. And um, this area here, is the um, an arc which I've called the, uh, the sector, I call the target sector. And I've um, said that animals which move towards this sector are um, considered oriented, and those which do not are considered non oriented. Um, and in addition to this, after discretizing, we decided to apply um, the, the psychometric function, which is a borrowing from uh, psychology and signal detection theory. Um, and the idea is to, uh, um, to look for the change in response, so this uh, significant change away from a, uh, a state which is uh, where the successes of the animal are um, uh, uh, what will be expected by random chance to, to, uh, to some other state which is um, uh, the highest that they can find from that stimulus. In, uh, as I understand in human psychophysics, um, the, the, the uh, lapse rate, so this um, uh, lambda up here can be extraordinarily low. And for my animals, this has not occurred. Uh, as you can see, even in the very, very large stimulus, they, they fail many times. Um, and there is, there is uh, also some kind of a base rate at which they will find it by, by a random chance. Um, so initially, I set about uh, trying to do this for the, um, and I was using the LME4, or um, trying to, to, to do, uh, use likelihood models. And this is problematic um, for a number of reasons, especially I wanted to include uh, effects, including that of individual. Um, and models often didn't converge uh, when you uh, have multiple effects. I was also having difficulty in, um, uh, because this, uh, this lapse is so high, it, can be diff it, it was uh, not uh, trivial to, to try and model this. Um, it's likely for models, and I definitely encountered errors with uh, floor and ceiling effects. Well, so this led me to, to try and do the phase, and I think I saw Rasmus talk in Copenhagen, which gave me the idea to, to, um, to do this. Um, and, uh, 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 more recently, I've been trying to implement um, uh, uh, models using um, Paul's framework uh, to try and do this. Uh, and uh, this is a, one of an output from um, uh, one of, uh, uh, Paul's packages, uh, to, uh, where I compare the um, the arc width of the stimulus that I showed you earlier uh, and the proportion of responses that uh, which was oriented to uh, using the the, um, uh, uh, the the fits. And this yellow line here indicates the median fit out of um, uh, just the 4,000 or so iterations. And the black dots indicate the actual treatments. And the, uh, the, the uh, mean response from the various animals, the size of the point indicates how many um, uh, uh, observations there were for that treatment. So um, uh, I decided the, the um, criterion to, to, to base the resolution on the most reasonable one was the inflection point of this curve. Which was uh, which gives a, a 22 degrees visual signal, and and uh, but also inspects the uncertainty around it. And from this, uh, uh, knowing this for a for a um, uh, uh, from this uh, signal type 
can, can uh, uh, predict the angular sensitivity of the animal um, and can compare this to, to, to what is known from uh, uh, its anatomy. Okay, um, and uh, so that was the, this is another strange animal called a velvet worm and uh, I was able to try and compare this animal as well. This is a, a previous data from a, from a different kind of stimulus, so uh, the resolution is actually quite a bit better for this animal than for the millimeter. So, um, uh, having, having, having looked at this, uh, um, myself and my, um, my office mate got, got more interested in this and other kinds of data that, uh, that she has and others have and, and how this can be explored. Um, so, uh, these dome beetles again, um, they, they, can, uh, they can use polarized light, but the, there's a question remaining as to how they use it and, and can they use the degree of polarized light um, as, as a cube. Um, so, uh, uh, my colleague James has data from these nocturnal um, dome beetles and their um, uh, sensitivity, uh, and he has a number of different treatments where he compares the sensitivity uh, or looks at the orientation of angle in relation to, to different polarized light cues. Uh, so here is his arena where you can see the stone beetle um, moving around uh, um, uh, in, under a, uh, uh, a light system which uh, has a um, uh, polarization on different angles. Okay. And uh, first pass, just uh, looking at what can be found. Um, uh, yes, there is a, 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 um, a change in the response, a clustering of animals in response to this uh, polarization. Interested in um, at what point does this, uh, 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 to, to, to exactly how this, this response is related? Is it uh, logarithmic? Is it linear? And uh, um, what is the, the maximum um, concentration this animal can find in relation to these uh, polarized cues? Um, so these models so far as you've seen are superlatively simple in comparison, in comparison to the ones people are using in ecology, for instance. Uh, but we also want to add, look at different, aspect, uh, different um, uh, effects as well. Um, in addition, another um, uh, colleague, Anna Schlerko, uh, has uh, Hochmatz and um, Schwermer, Schwermer, and is interested in, uh, in how these um, animals track flowers and to which senses, which senses are actually important for them. And what, what, uh, how fast uh, flowers can they track, and uh, uh, how does it compare between light and day? Um, to do this, uh, obviously, she used a robotic flower. Um, herself and, and colleagues and uh, physicists in the US uh, designed this setup and compared uh, um, uh, uh, moths that are nocturnal, di diurnal, and those uh, that, are, that are in between, uh, and, and, and varied a bunch of different uh, effects. Um, one difficulty with this is the data that comes back is complex. It's a Fourier transform data from the um, uh, from the animal's response, um, and uh, it, this has been difficult for, to uh, to analyze. And so you get out of this, you get a, um, a gain in a phase, you get a, a, a linear and a circular component, um, and uh, uh, it's been observed that this uh, this is changes, but it's 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 really hard to pin down exactly how this varies in relation to the effects they have. Uh, so I should show you that. Uh, do I have it here? Yeah, so they, there is a proposed model for how the system works. And again, first pass, we just decided to, to, to look at this and, uh, and how it relates and the, um, uh, the, the, not only the, um, uh, the, the direction or the, uh, of the, the, the angle of the phase, but also the variance of the phase is, is, um, is changing in relation to, to different frequencies of, uh, frequencies of this uh, stimulus. So, um, uh, yeah, this is this is in, um, and this is important because um, uh, why is this important? This is not my data. Um, this is this is a uh, this is important because um, it has it is it is still pretty unclear what these which which senses these animals are using and uh, and how they interrelate. Okay, uh, so there is a uh, conclusion. There is a um, uh, a lot of low-hanging fruit in sensory biology as regards uh, using Bayesian data. Um, uh, and to get the most out of this kind of directional data, which, which uh, so far um, uh, is much to be desired. Um, you can include many different, different effects um, uh, simultaneously, and we can build more appropriate models, and we can do something that hasn't been done at all, uh, which is to express the uncertainty around the model. And uh, this is certainly becoming feasible now um, using STAN, and especially with uh, how it's package. Okay, thank you.